In today's video, we are going to be updating the repositories in Proxmox so that the automatic updates work correctly. Hi everyone, my name is Robert and I make videos on Beep Beep stuff. Just to get this out of the way quickly, this video is going to solve one particular problem with Proxmox. The default installation of Proxmox comes with the enterprise repositories enabled by default. This would be good if you had a subscription, but if you don't, because it is kind of prohibitively expensive for a lot of people, then when you do APT update, either through the shell, uh, through the Proxmox UI, or through the web UI in Proxmox itself, you're actually going to get an APT get update 100 error and the task will fail. Now you can do these updates manually. There are ways of getting around it using scripts and so on. But in this video, I'm gonna show you a really easy way just using a couple of clicks and the Proxmox user interface to disable the enterprise repository, enable the community one, and then get back to normal. So now that we're uh, at the computer, um, open up your browser to Proxmox. Uh, mine is Vivaldi, definitely recommend using that. As you can see here, this is my Proxmox setup. And what you're going to do uh, is all gonna be in the user interface. So you're going to click on the Proxmox instance uh, underneath data center. Uh, and then inside here, you can do your updates. Now, what would normally happen is you're going to click on updates and if you hit refresh, it's going to run this command through like this, and you're going to get this problem where after it hits the enterprise uh, repository, it's going to say unauthorized IP uh, because the IP of this server is not registered for a subscription. And then you'll get the task error, apt get uh, update failed exit code 100. Now, uh, this is kind of annoying. So what you can do to disable this problem uh, and to still get updates is if you go to repositories, you can see the repositories that's uh, on here. And you can see here that we've got a warning saying the enterprise repository is enabled because it's enabled by default, but there's no subscription. That's this repository here. What you're going to do is you're going to hit disable. Now you're going to get a error message saying that there is no repository for this. But if you click on add, and you click the drop down, you can click on the no subscription one instead. Now I've already done that, but you would click on that and then click add. Uh, I've got it here and I'll click enable. And what you get here now is a green box for the updates for Proxmox will actually happen. You're still going to get the no subscription repository is not recommended for production use, but home lab is not production use, so that's fine. If you click on updates again and hit refresh, you'll get the uh, apt get update uh, command go through. And you can see here it reads through all of the repositories that are enabled and then it'll be task OK. And literally that's it. And uh, now all the updates will work as they should do. Um, now this will not uh, always fix the login prompt. Um, I've used a script for that. However, one thing to be aware of about disabling the prompt for the subscription. Now, in my case, um, if I log out now, and now if I log in, you can see here, I don't get the prompt, which is awesome. But if you disable the prompt via a script or via some kind of uh, no nag um, package on GitHub or whatever you want to use, just be aware that every time Proxmox updates or that the developers of Proxmox change the way in which that file is actually structured, that method will not work until it's updated and changed again. I don't know if it's worth doing it. I think that the longer term solution would be to, if you don't have the enterprise repository enabled, to just not have that show up. Now, I disabled this recently. Uh, and I also used a script. I don't know which one of those actually disabled the prompt uh, because after I tested the script, the prompt still came up. Now it could be a cache thing in the browser, but just so you know, this method is not 100% going to get rid of the little nagging box that pops up. However, um, enabling uh, the enterprise repository uh, for me again, removed the nag box. So I have to say it probably was the script, but now all my updates work. I almost never log out, so I'm never really worried about that but the updates now will work. You use the community repository or the no subscription repository and then everything worked just perfectly fine. 
Now that you've updated the repositories to get the updates from the community repository rather than the enterprise one, things will be looking pretty good for you. If this did fix your problem, do remember to like and subscribe to the video and to the channel because that does help me a lot. Uh, we are making really good progress on the channel. I'm very happy with how things are so far. This next message now goes out to the developers of Proxmox. We love Proxmox. A lot of home lab users love Proxmox. Um, and the way in which the subscription model works, uh, providing support as well as the updates for like almost 100 euros per year per CPU socket for a lot of home lab users is prohibitively expensive. Now, I don't know if it should just be free or not. Um, because other platforms don't have the same level uh, of usability. ESXi, for example, has some restrictions on the license terms and stuff like that. And uh, of course, um, Hyper-V Windows doesn't offer the same things that we're looking for as Proxmox does. So everyone's got their favorite hypervisor. Proxmox is one of the most popular hypervisors in the home lab area. Now we understand the need for enterprise support and they understand the need for paying for enterprise support but home lab people are not enterprise support. I don't think that it should just be free. I think that we do deserve to get updates for, for Proxmox, but 95 uh, euros, which is the last price I checked um, per year per CPU socket would mean that my setup will cost 200 euros almost, uh, which just cannot factor into the cost of, of doing home lab and doing studies. Um, I don't know what the cost should be, but I think that the developers at Proxmox need to have a serious sit down and decide if it's a possibility to put in a lower tier uh, level of subscription that would be good for home lab users because there is a lot of them. And I think that you would get actually more money uh, by allowing home lab users to provide some kind of uh, donation to you for a license, but the terms of the most basic license that you have now does not fit that category. Um, and I would like to see Proxmox continue to develop and receive support. And that sometimes does mean uh, little criticisms from here and there. Um, and it's my only real criticism, the nagging of the login uh, and subscription. It's a little bit annoying and jumping through hoops for scripts and editing files just to receive updates or to not be notified about the subscription is, is a little bit annoying. Uh, and I just think it ruins the uh, user experience. It's not a good user experience uh, from me as a user. And a lot of people also agree with that. So just take this uh, criticism for what it is. Please do have a look into it. At the very least, that would be really nice if you could just take a serious consideration about how you want to uh, support the home lab community. Uh, because in my case, for example, uh, I teach Proxmox to students and the students go out and they do stuff in the industry with Proxmox. And then those people are obviously going to want the enterprise support. But from the educational level, home lab level and kind of testing, it's it needs to be something different there. So. I'm giving you my love there, as well as some criticism. Everyone loves Proxmox. We do love and we do enjoy use it. Just please try to consider home lab users uh, when deciding the licensing costs.